going on, everybody? Kevin Burke from TheHoopDoctors.com. I'm joined by, you know who, Mr. NCAA. Can I call you that? For sure. Right. Greg Anthony. Let's start right there, Greg. Tournament time is upon us. Yes. Is there too much emphasis put on, on the conference tournaments as far as who gets in and who's left out? No, listen, the, the beauty of a conference tournament is it gives some of those teams that had disappointing seasons an opportunity to get hot and play themselves into it. You know, and so I think that adds to the excitement. It's one of the things that makes the tournament so compelling. You know, Penn State's a perfect example. Prior to the tournament, they weren't going to be in. You know, the fact they're able to get hot, they beat three quality teams, they find themselves in the tournament. You know, that, that's that's that opportunity it presents you. Dayton had a chance. Disappointing season. They lose the Atlantic 10 championship, but they're there. They play themselves in. So I like the conference tournaments for that reason. I also like it that UAB is an example got rewarded for winning the regular season title. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it just gives you, you another opportunity to get another team that wouldn't get there. Don't you, know, you want the 68 best teams to be represented as far as who's going to be the national championship? So, as far, as far as my, as far from what you're saying, if you UAB, they win the conference tournament, they're in. So, if they didn't win, they wouldn't be in there. So, are the 68 best teams represented? Well, listen, you, you're going to always have automatic qualifiers. So, is, are their teams better than Alabama State? Yes, but but one of the ways the system's set up, it's it's almost like a divide, you know, if you think about it. You know, not everybody is treated exactly equal, but everybody is given an opportunity. And so that's a, it's, I think it's a fair system. It's one of the reasons, again, why I like expansion, because now you're getting those opportunities. You know, sometimes we lose sight of the tournament is also going to be the highlight of a lot of young men and women's career. Athlete. That will be the penultimate moment of their life. They, they won't get any higher athletically than what they accomplished. Making it to the tournament. I remember watching uh, last week, Indiana State knocked off Missouri State. They end up getting in when they would not have got in. They spent the uh, championship, championship ceremony looking up watching one shiny moment. And I, I think it was a great sight. Every one of those kids was just staring at They watched the entire video. The eyes never left. That's a moment they don't remember for the rest of their life. So what, what I think you should do is celebrate the system we have because it rewards that. It gives those opportunities to those who, let's face it, they're less fortunate. They're like minorities. You know, you play in the MEAC, you know, the SWAC. You literally are. But you got an opportunity to go to the dance if you're able to win out. So uh, I think they should keep that. Now, if you want to add more, so that now some of those teams that are six, seven, or some of those power conferences, or four, some of those power power, then, then I say all four. That's my next question. Would you expand the tournament if you could? If so, I how would. many teams? How many? I would go to 96. Yeah. I have no problem with it. People talk about watering it down. Listen, a part of what we're doing here is celebrating student athletes. And what makes March Madness great is the fact that you get to see all these personal stories. You get to have all these little little engines that could yeah. to get an opportunity. And plus, you know, under the, form, the, the format of 96, you would basically give the top tier teams a bye the first round. Wouldn't it be really compelling as a one seed for you to play your first game against a team that beat you this year? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, as opposed to basically, you know, that would eliminate, in essence, the sacrificial land because now, you know, you plan a one seed, you're going to be about 40, potentially. I'm not saying they're all going to happen that way. Right. Now you let that, that, that 16 seed play a team that maybe they feel like they got a chance again. Right. Right. You know, I mean, you just create a little bit more parity, and I think it, it becomes even more compelling. Mm -hmm. And I think ultimately you're going to see an experience. Let me switch gears for just one second. Kemba or Jimmer? <laughs> for what? The national player of the year. That's a really good question. Uh, I thought what Kimba did in the Big East tournament was the most impressive stretch of basketball I've seen this year. That's funny you say that because you, he did that while Jimmer dropped 52 and you still yes, said that. Yes, and, and, and Jimmer, listen, Jimmer is phenomenal. Yeah. I, I love Jimmer. I think Jimmer for that is one, he's been great for college basketball. Yeah. He is a, 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 what I call a great college player. I don't want to hear about what he's going to be in the next. Yeah. Jimmer for that is a great college player. Agreed. Yeah. The thing that I love about Kemba, though, is Kemba affects more areas of the game. You know, and, and I went to the series game. He had 12 rebounds in that game. He had six steals. He also had one of his five assists on the last play where he made a pass to a team that allowed him to make the game winner, Jeremy Lamb. You know, so I, I like the whole, whole package. Sometimes we as fans or analysts or writers, we get 
we fall in love with the path to court. You know, we fall in love with the guy that can just score. And that's great, and he it should be a part of it, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't talk about the guy that affects you, you know, on the various other aspects of the game of basketball. That's what allows you to do. Final question before we let you get out of here. The national champions this year will be? I picked Ohio State in the beginning. I'm going to stay with Ohio State. I think they're going to end up playing Kansas. Uh, I'll be shocked if that actually happens. Yep. <laughs> Just with the, with the nature of the tournament. The way it goes, man. But for me, I think Ohio State is the most versatile team in the country. Uh, they can be effective playing many styles, and they have the best inside out combination to play. You know, they can play, and that versatility is something that like that. So that's just my pick. I think Kansas has a chance as well. Uh, you know, there, there's about, I think, 16, 18 teams that can get to the final yeah, four. Yeah, So if you got that many, you know, obviously a lot of teams like this. Appreciate the time. I'm Greg Anthony. I'm Kevin Burke. That's all we got. It's that video you got up over there that was a little disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> They got Duke Kansas up there. I mean, come on, man. If you ask me to do this, at least give me some rebel love. You know, I guess I had a documentary. You know, you're gonna be here. Oh, that hurts.